Um, good morning. Uh, welcome to Big Big Kirk. Um, special event here. We usually have a recital on Saturday morning. So, our guest today is Hamish Napier from Granton and Spain. Um, I could give a bit of a long list of folk he's performed with, which would give you some indication of how talented an artist he is. He's, he's certainly one of the most significant traditional musicians in Scotland. Today. He's a singer, he's a composer, he plays keyboards, he plays flutes, he plays the banjo, the drums, <laughs> and the bagpipes. But it's a, a real honour to have him here today and it's, it's, it's great that we've got a, a, a solid audience for his recital here. So ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause. Hey, Mr. Napier. <laughs>
some of the tunes today I'll, I'll, I'm playing from old collections of music. And what I mean by old collections of music is in the 18th and 19th century, thank goodness these amazing visionaries went around and collected and wrote down these old tunes and, and released them in collections. And if it wasn't for that, so many of these tunes would have been lost. Um, a lot of the tunes I write are inspired by these old dance music tunes of Scotland and Ireland. And I'm going to be sharing some of those with you today as well. Um, I wrote an album of music called The Woods, and it's all about Scotland's native trees. And it kind of follows the Scottish Gaelic tree alphabet, so a lot of the names of the trees and the properties of the trees and the, uh, were all linked in with the Gaelic alphabet, which has 18 letters. And the first letter of the Gaelic alphabet is B, which is Bay uh, for the birch tree. So Burks and Scots, Bay and Gaelic, and, uh, and, and we know them as Birch. And this particular uh, tree is so special to the Highlanders of old. Uh, it was really interesting exploring all the properties and folklore of each individual tree. And it was fascinating what you come up with, you know, what the Vikings thought about the ash tree, for example, and what uh, the Highland folk thought of the Birch. And what was so amazing about the Birch is that it had so many uses. They'd make it into ropes, spinning wheels, they'd make it into drams. So before there was uh, whiskey, people loved making birch spirit. Sadly, that's well, it's something that's coming back. Uh, <laughs> uh, but there, they also, you know, the firewoods, uh, also the leaves that uh, were, were hung up and used for in the winter as fodder for the cattle. So the birch was like absolutely essential. You, know, you think about the Inuit folk in the far north of Canada, uh, you know, using all the different parts of the, 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 the animals that they were hunting. Uh, you know, it's like that here in the islands of the birch tree, if you believe. So I'm going to play a tune called The Pioneer, which is written for the birch, and it's the first leaves that appear in spring, uh, is, the, is, is the birch. So here we go. And I've got these, this is a, a harmonium, so just like a kind of thing you would see somebody pedaling away at a pump organ, uh, except it's at my feet. So I played all the chords in about a year ago, <laughs> and I'm just going to trigger them all again with my feet. So uh, that's what's going on here, in case you're wondering what's he doing with his feet there. Uh, so.
here. <laughs> I'm just going to get the. Uh, that's it. Just going to get the. Make sure I'm pressing the right chords. Okay. It's Strath's Bay time. So I come from Strath's Bay. I always feel very proud of that fact because it's the only place that I know of in the whole of Britain that actually is named after a tune type. Uh, I've never heard of a place called Jig or Waltz. <laughs> I might be wrong. Let me know if you need <laughs> two, four marks or something. But um, yeah. And uh, it's just the tune, they're such lovely, beautiful, bouncy tunes. They were originally called Strats Bay Reels because it was a very unique way of playing reels. Uh, reels, reel with two L's. R E L R E E L L. Uh, but uh, then eventually just got um, abbreviated to, to Strats Bay's. And the, the first tune is written, it's a modern tune written by a brilliant teacher from uh, Loch Ness side, and his name was Donald Riddle. And he's taught amazing fiddle players like Sarah Jane Summers, Bruce McGregor, Duncan Chisholm, Adam Sull, and all these people were lucky to gain from the gain from the amazing tuition of Donald Riddle. And it's from his Clunes collection. So it's from a modern tune collection put together, 80s or 90s or something like that. Uh, and then I'm going to follow it with a tune uh, which comes from the Angus Cummings collection and the Lairds of Grant and Grant and Spade. Uh, Grant and Spade boasts the ugliest castle in the whole of it. <laughs> Scotland, which I'm so proud of, um, and it's just this big giant kind of factory thing, it's got the most amazing surroundings and it's in such a beautiful place, and the Lairds of Grant, they used to own massive swathes of land, they had a Lairds champion, they had a Lairds piper, uh, and they had this dynasty of musicians who were actually Cummings, uh, and the Angus Cumming uh, in 1780 released this book, collection of local music, and some of it he might have written himself, some of it his ancestors, some of them he spoke called the Browns of Kincardine near Bogart. Uh, all these uh, tunes are, are now classics, if you like, in the Scottish folk music scene. So um, this tune is called Balmon Granta, which is a uh, town of the Grants, uh, or it's also known as a Hernix reel. Uh, and uh, Hernix is a great farm, that's where we used to get our milk from in the 90s when we had lots of these local dairy farms. Uh, and then the last tune is called Mahar Spey, which is Gaelic for Mother Spey or the Source of Spey. And that's way up there, uh, Log Spey, right up near the Coriad Pass. Mm -hmm. So three straps space for you. Just check that I'm not, I've got the right sounds here.
definitely fit together um, because of their geographical uh, location. And the first one is in uh, the Simon Fraser collection of music. And it's, it's in the book as Anne Karen Gorm, as in Karen Gorm of Mountain. And in Ireland it gets played as a, as a jig uh, called Miss Sullivan's. But in Scotland it's been turned into a Strath so it's been Scottishified. Really. And uh, who knows where it came from first? Is it Scottish? Is it Ireland? Irish? It doesn't matter to me. I just love that there's been tunes getting passed back and forward up and down that west coast for, for absolutely centuries. So it doesn't matter. I just love the fact there's two different versions. It's the first tune's called Anne Karen Gorm. It's one of my favourite checks. And the second tune's called Renette's Daughter. And Renette is a gorgeous croft up above Abernethy, the Forest Lodge in the RSPD Lodge called Forest Lodge in Abernethy Nature Reserve. And this is a, a lovely croft. It's got that kind of, if you imagine the red tin roof, and it's just a gorgeous old stonework, and it's got sweeping fields below it. You can see it from the top of Cairn Gorm, and it's just, it's got the most amazing view of the Cairn Gorm. You can see Bangor and Cairn Gorm and all the northern quarries and everything. It's, it's got to be one of the best views. And it's got a really amazing story and a tune to go with it because Barbara Grant of Renan, um, she, uh, this is probably, I don't know if it's maybe 18th century or 17th century, but she was in her house getting ready for her wedding and all the rest of the family were in town, so that would probably be in Tulla, which is a small village, that would be the big city. And they were preparing for the wedding and suddenly a whole load of Camerons came through and they had been cattle raiding in Murray and they'd come up through that gap and I don't know, maybe they were going to go through the Larry Gru or one of the, one of the gaps up through there to get, to get over to Le Havre. And they, they came across the house, they came across her, they ransacked the house, stole all the stuff, tied it onto their horses, and they, they tied her onto the back of the horse as well to kidnap her. And uh, it's all just good business back then, wasn't it? Stealing, <laughs> stealing cattle and just replaced the word clan with cartel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was it. And, um, well, she was, Wise. One of the things I love about this story is there's so many stories, a shame, like it's a, it's a terrible shame, there's so many stories in Scottish folklore of, of, of women being weak, but hardly any stories of women doing great things, and that's why I love this story, because she was really clever, and she uh, took off her shoe, and she picked her moment, and she struck the rider, uh, Cameron uh, soldier, behind the ear with her shoe, and killed him dead instantly, and then she booted him off the horse, and she took the reins and she went back to the Tullock and she got the rest of the grants and they chased after this Cameron war party and they killed them all. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that, is, that is a kind of 16th century happy ending to a story. I'm pretty sure they did it all work out. No. Um, uh, so that was it. And so it's, it's, and it has this tune and it has this place and I just love it. And stories and the landscape are all uh, connected together. We, keep, we need to share these stories. So, um, so that is, we're going to play uh, Renette's Daughter. So uh, this is Karen Gordon, Renette's Daughter. I'll just check again on the right. <laughs>
<laughs> and uh, it was uh, my composition teacher when I was studying out in Boston. He asked me to write a piece of music that fit into the, the, the chords of I Got Rhythm. You know, I got rhythm, I got music, you know that. Uh, and so it has a whole load of chords to go with it. So he said, try and write a tune. And I thought, how am I going to do that? And I thought, horn pipe. Needs to be a horn pipe. So uh, this is. This is a uh, sort of sounds like a cross between I Got Rhythm and um, Captain Pugwash. <laughs> <laughs> um, it really does. <laughs> um, I don't worry, I'm just going to play it once for you. Um, but uh, yeah, and it's called The Wee Plank, and a great singer from Glasgow, Anne Nielsen, sadly passed away. And she was a wonderful woman and very supportive of young musicians. And she commissioned me to write this tune, and she said that. Her, her and her elderly friends were in the in a, in a lady's house and she passed away and they, they were cleaning out the house for the family and they found £20,000 in cash underneath the floorboard. <laughs> so she was very sensible not keeping that in the bank, I think that was good. <laughs> <laughs> and she, so anyway, they, they, apparently there's a Glasgow name for that, because she was real Glasgow, she was my brother Glenn actually. And uh, she said that uh, this is in Glasgow, this is called a wee plank. <laughs> so there's a wee bit of walking the plank, there's a little bit of horn pipes, and there's a bit of I don't know. So I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> I realized 
come by black with shades here in the day's dawn. Oh, are you there directly? I'm not even. The ship's not out of your gates, some of God in blood spent. Rise up, Betsy Garden, and give me my gun. For though I can with the law, should I'll never. Space. I've grown up with that kind of 
sang uh, all the time. You know, people come to the house and are like, what was that? <laughs> uh, so that's the spade jazz. And then I follow that, um, I'm going to finish off uh, with the set, the last tune is called Or Dramachter. And the Dramachter Pass, you know, is the one that you came up with. You've all been, I'm sure, along yet. In case you don't uh, know what the Dramachter is, that's when you come from Bainham and Strathbane, you head down into Blair Athol, and you go up through this big, uh, beautiful uh, glen, um, and that's the Dramachter, a uh, big moor there. And uh, the train is the highest point in mainland British Rail. And so all the, when the steam drag train drivers back in the day, they had a, a terrible job getting up that hill. So if you were the fireman, you know, the one that was shoveling the coal, he said it was, it was a long time of just shoveling coal non-stop. It was a real workout. And I had the pleasure of interviewing an old railman called Jimmy Gray from Abbey Moor. And he started out 16, year old, 16 years old and made him a fireman during the war, so he got this great honour, this really high level steam train job when he was only 16 or 17. <laughs> and so his whole life had been the, the, the railways. And he said when he was a fireman, he had the, the driver he had was a bit of a, a mad one. He had a, a bit of a speedster, and his name was uh, Willie Wilkie, and he was also a piper, and he was quite a joker. He said when they were coming up the hill, and you have a sight of the steam engine, Willie Wilkie used to copy the sound of the engine going, Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then it's a goal to the top and start going down the hill. And you can, you can. <laughs> so uh, I thought that definitely needs, uh, definitely needs a tune. So uh, the tune's called Lord Dramopter as coming over the top of the Dramopter path. So that's the last one. There's a tune in the middle, and it's written for um, it's written for a man called Old Man Dunshi. And I think when you're a wee lad growing up in a rural area, you end up with kind of lots of unlikely heroes. Uh, and one of them was this wee man he called Old Van Dan Shee. And he had a moped, red white moped, which was cool already. And he was a fisherman, and he would come down from the town dressed in his kind of green olive uh, waders and everything. And he was a spinner, so he had a spinning rod that was sticking out the back, and you could see the wee. As he came by on the motorbike, he had the open face helmet, and he would always be like. <laughs> <laughs> we were just young lads, and that was like our bit, but then it was like it was allowed to be his bit as well. Like the old man that she always gave us a thumbs up and big moustache and we adventure pension on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was just brilliant and um, sadly he passed away on the River Spade doing what he loved doing fishing for trout and they found him in a long pool and um, anyway that I remember it was the first person my mother sat me down and told me that somebody's died and I was like oh it was absolutely distraught and old man that she his wishes were that he his ashes would be spread on so there'd been the, the, the funeral uh, and they'd had the, um, the cremation and then they had a little ceremony as well with the local minister and there were some of the close family were all gathered at the long pool and they were just spreading the ashes carefully on the water and there were these little bubbles appeared and suddenly all these shrouds were
so much. It's been an absolute joy to play for. What a lovely atmosphere. Uh, thank you so much to, to Paul Anderson, Sean Anderson, and all of the committee of the Tarland Food and Music Festival. I'm very envious. I wish we had a festival like this over our side uh, of the Care Gardens, and maybe we need to sort that out. <laughs> but it's really, it's really a set in precedent for a great local rural festival, and yeah, it's just a wonderful thing. So let's give them a big hand. Here's five tunes for, for you to finish. So um, the last tune is called The Trembling Tree. 